Morning folks and welcome back after several very long weeks I've finally been able to get back on the water this has been a long time coming <laughs> I've picked a beautiful day we've been blessed with some amazing weather lately which has made lockdown a lot more bearable for most people but yeah it's nice to be out on the Norfolk Broads this is unheard of to be able to paddle on the broads in summertime without all the boat traffic. Normally it's just jam packed full of people on broads cruises, holiday boats, rental boats, day cruises. It's like bumper boats out here normally, but um, all those boat hire places are closed due to the lockdown and the restrictions. So uh, it should be reasonably quiet today. I'm paddling on the River Yare today, which runs from Norwich out towards the coast at Great Yarmouth or near Great Yarmouth, and I'm paddling downstream. There are a couple of broads that I want to go and check out, which I haven't paddled before, so that's where I'm headed now. I put in at Bramerton Common. There's park parking there, car parking for, for I don't know, 10 cars or so, um, and entry into the river, although it's a bit tricky in that it's a drop of about a metre from the water from the water's edge down to the water itself, um, which isn't too bad in a Canadian canoe, but if you've got a kayak, you might want to consider one of the other um, entry points where there's a slipway. We're just coming up to the ferry house here, um, which is a pub, sadly closed at the moment due to the restrictions in place. But there used to be a chain ferry that operated from here until the late 1930s, taking people across the river. But sadly there was a, an incident, an accident, where the ferry collided with a passing boat and completely destroyed it. And uh, that was the end of that. Apologies to those of you who are fans of the big black dog. I haven't brought her with me today. It's just gonna be way too hot for her today. She's a black dog. She's a dog designed for sub-zero temperatures. You sit her in the front of a boat in the belting sunshine and she just overheats. She can't cool down. It's just not fair on her. So she's at home in her shady, lazy corner where she spends most of the summer. And it's just me today. I've had to bring a canoe barrel with me to replace the ballast <laughs> in the front of the canoe. But that's fine, it's got my lunch in it. Absolutely gorgeous today. Just up here on the left, we've got the boatyard and marina at Brundle. And this used to be quite a hub during the Victorian times. Before then, leisure, leisure time was pretty much unheard of. So when people started having time to relax and go and explore, the Norfolk Broads became very popular. Um, old sailing barges, the old wherries were converted into, into leisure boats and people would be on the river in rowing boats and exploring. And there were some quite famous gardens here in Brundle. Not a lot to be seen of it today because it's all been redeveloped into luxury apartments and the marina.
I'm just going past one of the dikes that leads down to Serling and Broad here. This is one of the broads I want to explore today, but I'm going to come back to this later in the day. I'm going to head further downstream to Rockland Broad and then come back to this one. Uh, this is supposed to be an absolute delight for paddling. Lots of uh, tight little channels that bigger craft can't get down because they're just too shallow. And um, yeah, a whole sort of like network of waterways is how it's described in my guidebook. So I'm quite looking forward to going and having a little explore. We've just turned off the river and we're now headed down a channel called the Fleet, which leads down to Rockland Broad. It's one of the smaller broads and it's also one of the quieter ones. So if you're looking for a place to canoe in the summer, away from all the bigger boats, then it might be a good choice. And this is what I wanted to see on this broad. On the right hand side here is a line of trees which seem to be apparently growing up out of the water. But what it actually is is a boat graveyard called the Slaughters. There are 13 old wooden hulled Norfolk sailing wherries sunk here. They, they were sunk at the end of their life when they were no longer serviceable and at low tide you can still see the odd timber poking up through the water. What's interesting is that as the hulls silted up They've become little man-made islands. Trees are growing on them, plant life is growing, and if you didn't know they were there, you'd just assume it was a little line of natural islands. The wherry was the barge of its day. They were used from the mid-1700s up until the 1940s to transport goods up and down the Broadland rivers. And when they got to the end of their life and were no longer serviceable, they were often sunk as a way of disposing of them. Yeah, very nice, Rockland Broad. I'm now heading back up that channel, back to the river, where we'll turn left and head back upstream. Thankfully I'll have the wind on my back this time. I had a, a slight headwind all the, way, all the way here, which although it was only slight, it does make a difference. So having that behind us will definitely make the paddling easier. Going back to the old wherries, uh, during the war a lot of boats were commandeered by the Ministry of Defence. Any sort of wherries or pleasure boats, barges, anything like that. And um, they were moored up on the broads, uh, causing obstructions. So they, they, they moored them up right the way across. Um, you know, there was a, a huge threat and worry of a German invasion. 
and they wanted to cover every eventuality and, and one of the one of the things that they were worried about was a landing by seaplane so any inland waterways lakes the broads obviously some big expanses of water uh, could potentially have been used for landing so they made them uh, impossible to use by covering them in boats <laughs> Sterling and Broad is quite interesting for a number of reasons. Um, firstly, it used to be quite a large expanse of water and it's now much smaller. It's silted up and the, the body of water that is there now, called Bargate, is much smaller than the original larger body of water that used to sit there. So you've got this small Broad and then you've got this kind of finger network of channels which leads off it, which big boats can't go down, so it's ideal for canoeing. It's also um, where they first discovered that the broads were man-made. There was a, a stratographer called Joyce Lambert who made that discovery in the 1950s, believe it or not. Before then, they thought the broads were natural. They were, they were dug out for peat and other materials hundreds of years ago, and then they flooded. You know, there's, there's rivers that run through the broad network and they flooded these, these excavations, these, these peat pits. It's also another site of a boat graveyard. There's a whole load more wherries that were sunk here in the 1950s. So we'll have a little look and see if we can see anything that remains of those. Morning. Right. So just over there, beyond that chain barrier, are another 13 sunken wherries. Actually, you can see a bit more here. You can see timbers sticking up with metal work on by the looks of it over there. And a definite shaped bit there. God knows what part of the boat that is. But yeah, quite eerie actually. I don't think I'd want to go in there.
Okay, we've, <laughs> we've hit a dead end here. I'm gonna retrace my steps. There were a couple of other little fingers that it looks like you can get down. It's hard to um, get your bearings actually as to where you are in here because it's, well, it's not featureless, but you can't see any landmarks. There's reeds and there's <laughs> lots of kind of willow and short shrubby trees. But it all looks the same. Well, you could definitely see how you could get lost in here. <laughs> there are just channels running everywhere. I've just come to a T-junction and there's a channel running that way and one behind me there. I think I'm going to go back the way I came though before I get myself in a pickle. <laughs> it's nice though. You wouldn't think you were on the broads. Try down this way. Okay, we've come to another dead end. <laughs> Just got to see if I can retrace my steps now. I think I can remember which turns I took. I think it is this way, it's because I had the wind on my back. Well that was good fun. If anybody's thinking about paddling on the broads, highly recommend that little section through there. That is good fun. Very nice. I'm absolutely parched. I'm going to uh, find somewhere to stop and make a cup of tea and have a little bite to eat. I don't know what time it is. It must be probably late morning, I should imagine, and I was on the water by six o'clock this morning. I think quarter, quarter to six I was already on the water. Yeah. So I'm pretty thirsty. 
problem is through there is there's no bank, it's all just reeds. So I just need to find a place where there's a bit of proper bank and um, I'll make a cup of tea. Put my Kelly kettle with me. Cheers. Mm. I've made myself a bit of lunch. I've got one of those um, hobo stove things to go on top of the Kelly kettle so you can cook something while your uh, water's coming up to boil. So I've just got some frankfurters and pickles and tomatoes in a wrap with a bit of nod to Andy at Kent Survival tomato ketchup. Cheers. The Kelly kettle's perfect for days out in the canoe. It's um, probably a bit bulky for backpacking. It's a, quite a 
large thing. It doesn't sort of fold down or anything. But um, just to shove in a barrel and take with you canoeing, it's great. Just runs on a few twigs, a couple of handfuls of twigs and boils water really quickly for a cup of tea. It's great. I actually bought wood with me, <laughs> um, which, yeah, I know there's trees everywhere, but um, I didn't know what it was going to be like until I got here. And sometimes, you know, you'll find a place to pull over on the bank and there might not be any wood. So I just thought I'd bring my own wood with me because I had some at home. So uh, that worked well. Well, I'm nearly back to where I started, where I parked. It's been a glorious paddle today. Some real gems, Serling Abroad. Well, what a place that is. Highly recommend that to anybody looking for somewhere to paddle on the broads. Beautiful. Fantastic weather. And being able to paddle the Norfolk broads in summer without all that river traffic. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon.